My name is JT, and this is a story how I built my camper van. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of JT Time. JT here. For today's episode, what we're going to be talking about is installing your subfloor or wood floor on your van. Uh, let's start like we always start. Uh, what tools do you need? A drill with a Phillips bit is the first thing that you'll need. Uh, the second thing that you need is you need some kind of self-tapping screws or some kind of screws that you can screw right into the frame of the van. I have some leftover building materials from my house construction uh, and I'm gonna take advantage of those materials since wood is really, really expensive right now and I'd rather use what I already have on hand. So for my subfloor, I'm going to use this um, old wood that I have here. I am going to plane these down so that they're all the same thickness. Conceptually, it'll work the same way whether you use my wood or subfloor, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. Um, you need a wood hammer. So this hammer is made uh, with these softer kind of heads on them. And when you swing, you can kind of hit the wood into place so that it seats right against this kind of tongue and groove a uh, little bevel right here. So this one's already here because this is where my wood's going to start. So I want my oak wood floors to start from here to the front of the car and then on the back side since that's all going to be bed box and it's all going to be storage area i don't need it to be this nice wood i'm just going to use a cheap or a cheaper kind of osb or something like that just to kind of line the bed and ha make sure that it's smooth and then that's going to be my back side but for today's episode i'm just strictly going to talk about installing this there's these fasteners here and then the seats have mounts on them the eye outline where the mount's going to be at so I'm going to focus on building my wood around these mounts so that I can still put the seat back down and it can still tighten down just as much as it needs to. You do need a chalk line because you do need to make sure you are screwing into um, a section of the van that doesn't have any kind of piping, any kind of electrical, anything that it can pierce into. So there is a little bit of an extend on it. I'll show you what that looks like um, over here. See those screws right there? Those are the screws from the wood that I have down there. So I'm gonna look underneath the car and see where I can actually screw the wood into that doesn't have any obstructions or anything that it may pierce into that could harm uh, the mechanics of the car. So let's go ahead and do that and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so I struck all my lines. Um, <clears throat> these lines indicate paths. I, I, if you saw me earlier, I was checking underneath the van for where I could actually have safe areas to drill, like pretty much screw screws into the base. These are the lines that I came up with. This one goes all the way to the front. This goes all the way to the front. This one, all of these blue lines, you can barely see this one right here, but this blue line goes all the way to the front. And then there's one more line right here. So this is where I'm actually gonna target where I'm gonna screw into the van. I did draw some boxes out, like this box right here. This is an area where I need to be careful because there are hoses that run relatively close to the top of the van here. And then right here is another location as well. Some electrical cables or something is running underneath the van that's pretty close to this um, base. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with cutting wood and uh, start, it, start screwing these pieces in and see how it goes. I'm getting better and better at installing them and figuring out better techniques. So um, what I ultimately ended up doing, which ended up taking a little bit longer, but it saves me more trouble in the long run, is when I put the wood down, I actually um, pocket all the screw heads. Originally, I was just screwing the head right through the piece of wood. That was probably just laziness on my part. But when you actually pocket it with this special drill bit that pretty much lets you pocket the head, um, it lets you sink the head flush with this little uh, tongue uh, and groove section of the of the uh, the oak floor, and it allows it to actually be installed similar to the way it would be installed if you were just shooting nails through it with a finishing head. So this 
uh, what was happening on the other one was that it was compressing this piece of wood down. It was pushing this right up against the, the metal or the, the foam here. And it was making it really hard to put in my next piece. Whereas this, it seats the piece of wood down on the ground really nice, but it keeps this lip right here so that I can tuck the next piece in there really, really easy. And you can see, you know, I had a little bit of bumpiness on the first few, but now it's starting to kind of flush out, which this bumpiness I can probably get out with a sander, which I probably will sand it down a good portion to make it all smooth and kind of give it that nice clean finish. But, uh, but doing it this way that I've been doing it recently has been really working out for me and I'm just going to continue doing it for the rest of the band. <laughs> Alright guys, so I can tell that this is going to take me just a little bit longer. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here just because I'm running out of time today. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all learned something, and uh, here's what I got done so far. I only got done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine layers, or nine, nine uh, lines. Other than that, you guys have everything that you need in case you want to actually do wood floors the way I'm doing it. Uh, for your camper van, uh, but hope you enjoyed and uh, see y'all real soon here on JT time